On this desk behind me is the most faulty broken used PC parts I have ever seen come through the channel here at Tech Yes City. And you may be wondering, why are all these broken parts here, Brian? What is this for? And this is for the series Can Yes Fix It, where I take the broken parts you guys send into my PO box, which I'll put up on the screen here, and then I see if I can attempt to fix them in just a quick and easy manner that a lot of you guys can apply as well. Instead of having to do fancy micro soldering, which me personally, I've said this in the past, it's very hard to do these things. You do need very precise hands, and my hands are pretty rough. We're trying to see if we can just get quick and easy fixes on these parts. However, what we've got right here, as we said earlier, is just so many of these parts on the table. I'm actually gonna have to split this into two episodes, possibly even three, just because I'm shocked that you guys have sent in this much stuff in the past year. So let's go through all this stuff one by one, and I'm actually gonna start with the smaller boxes first, and then we'll move into the larger boxes, which just have a lot of different stuff. So let's get straight into it right after the intro. Baby, So the first package we have here is from M. Thompson, and he sent in, rather than broken parts, he sent me in some supplies. I guess he wants to see better cable management on the channel, but also he wants me to have a better gaming experience, where he sent over these Philips. I didn't even know what they were at first, but then they looked very similar to the SHP 9500s from memory. But I didn't even know since then Philips have made a different version, and they're called the SHP 9600s, and they include a detachable boom microphone. And I'm gonna try these out and let you know in the comments if it's any good, but really surprised. Thank you so much for this gift. And there was also these other two little mice here from uh, Rat. The, uh, I mean, these mice are probably not my thing, but the headset is definitely going to be one worth trying out. Even though I don't use headphones or headsets that much, when I do, I want to have the right sound signature. So thank you very much, Mr. Thompson, for sending this in. Here's a little mic test on it. And I think I may have just found my new gaming headset. So next up here, we've got a package sent in from James. And he's essentially tried uh, over the few years uh, selling some gaming PCs. He wrote a heartfelt letter where he got into it, but COVID came and sort of ruined everything. And don't worry, James, COVID ruined, uh, I think, pretty much everyone's lives, mine included. It did mess with, mess with everyone's lives, that's for sure. And uh, he's just, he just wants out. Like, he's just he's, uh, sending over some stuff that he, he's not sure if it works, and he wants me to check it out, see if I can do my magic to get it to work. And he sent over here two CPUs. One is an i5-6500, the other is a Xeon. So those are pretty easy to test. We could just pop them in a motherboard, see if we get a signal out of them. The GPUs, uh, we'll get on to testing these straight away. We've got a GTX 570 and a GTX 670, and we can just pop those in the test bench. We'll actually give them a real quick clean down first. And then there's a water cooler right here. Now, water coolers, if you wanna know if they work or not, the easiest way to do it is to hook it up to a CPU, go into the bus, check the temperatures, see if they're okay, and also feel the pump on the actual unit itself. I find if you pass this test, the water cooler is about 90% of the way there. Obviously to test the rest of the stability on a water cooler, you generally have to uh, then run it for quite a long time. But let's get on now to doing a bit of stability testing with these parts, see how they go. And in terms of the drives, that's pretty much, uh, the one thing I find with drives is you've actually got to try and install windows on them and format them because sometimes they can pop up even in the BIOS, but then when it gets to formatting them, they just pretty much clonk out. So when you when you go to do a build, that's probably one of the easiest things to test is the drives. But uh, let's see if these parts are working. So we've just finished up testing out the parts that James sent over here and all the parts work except for one and that is the GTX 670. Now in terms of the CPUs, we just ran through the motions on putting, installing them on builds that we know work, everything works beforehand 
and everything worked after, but also we used one of the builds to test the water cooler and the pump was very strong. It was still working fine. So I believe the water cooler should be okay too. GTX 570 had to install older drivers, but that seemed to work okay. It wasn't until we got to the GTX 670, however, that we did a three-step process where we tried it in a display port just on the PCI X16 slot, gave out no signal. Then we tried it over the 4X slot that I got below that, and that sort of got to Windows, then installed the driver and crapped itself. Then I tried it on VGA uh, via DVI, so it's called DVI-A, I believe. That's the port that still supports analog, and that I believe they stopped that after GTX 900 series. But sometimes you can have a GPU that just doesn't work over HDMI or DVI-D or uh, DisplayPort, but it works over VGA. I've seen that a couple of times. And in this case, it did work after we did that, but the problem is it installed the drivers and it just gave out errors. So it wouldn't install the driver properly over the VGA side of things, but it still gave out the signal after it tried to install the driver. So there is something faulty on the GTX 670. And unfortunately that's, I mean, with the GTX 670, is it even worth the time to then try to fix that card because of how old it is? It's probably not gonna be worth anyone's time to try and fix that card, but rather the cooler on it, I think, and the fans especially are actually kind of salvageable. So that's one thing I like about these older Asus cards is a lot of the coolers were interchangeable in between GPUs in that series. Uh, so I've actually used a 670 cooler on like a GTX 770 before, and it's worked absolutely fine when the cooler had problems on the 770. Anyhow, thanks for sending that in, James. I'll make some of that work. And in terms of the i5-6500, I'll actually probably pass that on to Les. He loves his older i5s. I personally just have no use for them in flips because the rest of the components are just like, if we're looking at a 6th gen motherboard, it's much more worth it to just put an i7-6700 in there. You're just going to get so much more interest in your gaming PC. Anyhow, let's get on to the next one. So next up here, we've got a package in from John. And they're writing in, they waited until I got back from Japan to send this in. So thank you very much. And they sent over some uh, spare fans as well as uh, both 12 centimeter and 20 centimeter. Now, weird thing is about 20 centimeter, I just never get a use case scenario to use 20 centimeter fans. In fact, we've still got that 20 centimeter fan from the flip up challenge and I just don't know what to do with it. But uh, these fans right here, the 12 centimeter ones, we do find, I do use uh, them quite a bit. Hence why I pull them out of a lot of builds especially cases that I don't have side panels and things like that, and I end up chucking them out. I always make sure I get the 12, 12 centimeters out of there because they just come in handy, especially I always make sure I've got an exhaust fan in all my builds. Ever since I did the testing on how important an exhaust fan was, I always make sure to include them. So that'll definitely come in handy. And then we've got some Ryzen Stealth coolers here, and believe it or not, I actually do need these quite a bit because I either get CPUs on the used market locally here, no one includes the coolers, on Ryzen 5s, uh, 3600s for instance, or I get some off AliExpress and they never include the coolers. But what we got right here is the prize possession. So they say there's an RX 580 that they were given and they couldn't get it to work. It just ended up, um, it was just working fine and then it just suddenly stopped. And so we're gonna give that, we're gonna try and get that working right now. And <laughs> if you guys have seen the channel recently, it's just, it's no surprise that an RX 580 is coming in and it just suddenly stops working. So, I, I mean, if you guys are having good success with these cards, great. I just actually shy away from even buying them off the used market now just because my failure rate on them or my incidence rate is just extremely high. It's like over 50%. Actually, for 2024, it's just been 100%. I just haven't had a card that worked. Actually, last Christmas, I did get an RX 474 gig in just before the new year, and that did work. But that was like with, that, and the, the ironic thing was that RX 470 was just given to me in a, in a package deal I got with all these other uh, banger PCs. Like the person didn't care. They're like, oh, I don't know if this works. And then the ones that I actually bought through legit means, they, <laughs> they didn't work. Anyhow, they say they've been a, a patron supporter since 2019, so thank you very much. I love the support from you guys. As always, I try to keep the content coming as best as I can. Uh, but they also wonder, could the flip up challenge, so they've been enjoying the uh, $100 flip up challenge, which I really wanna start again, but they wonder, could it work in Japan? Something to explore. So 
The thing is about Japan with the $100 flip up challenge, I just, I know for a fact guys, it is not going to work. And the reason being is because I actually, when I was there, I tried flipping PCs. And really the margins are just so incredibly low in Japan. If I'm doing the $100 flip up challenge, I, I'd be in my grave before I could do it in Japan. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm trying to be realistic here. I just think it takes a long time in the area where I was at. Maybe if I was in a different district or near an army base, I think if I was near an army base or something like that, I could have a, a healthy business going. It's just that the actual native Japanese people just really don't trust foreigners a whole lot and they don't want to buy off a foreigner. Um, and I found when I was there and I was actually flipping some PCs, I did have some success while I was there, but it was always, I was always selling to other, other foreigners. And that was just, it was just to the point where it just wasn't anywhere near as healthy as it was here. And the margins were extremely low. So yeah, I just think it wouldn't really work in Japan uh, for flipping PCs. I mean, if people are having success over there, uh, do let us know in the comments, especially if you're a foreigner and you're having success flipping PCs in Japan and you got some secrets and maybe you want to DM me, I don't know, but I just had no, I had very little success, especially compared to Australia here where it's just, it, you know, it's just pop a lopping. So we're going through the motions and this stuff is almost like clockwork with these RX 580s and 480s and stuff. Basically what you do is you put it in the first slot, no signal, that's what kind of was expected here. Drop it down to the lowest slot, again PCIe 4X lane, no signal, B2 error on the motherboard. Uh, we then drop in a main GPU in the top slot and we can boot to Windows and we can see in Windows here that the card is pushing out errors, just like that GTX 670 was, except the exception here is, is that the RX 580 doesn't have the DVI-A support. It doesn't have the analog support, just like GTX 10 series and upwards doesn't support that either. So you're left with HDMI and DisplayPort only. And so what we do here is I look for the same VRAM, which is Samsung in this case on this RX 580, and I look for the lowest clocks on the VBIOS on Tech Power Up so I can flash a VBIOS with lower memory clocks, lower core clocks. And in this case, we flashed on a 2048 SP. That was the one that was up there. And we momentarily, I do say this, we momentarily got it to work without any errors in Windows. But then after that, it just, there's something faulty. It just then spitted out errors again. I couldn't get it to boot as the main GPU. So there is something just, there's something faulty with this card and it is not coming back to life. However, that being said, if you've got an RX 480, RX 580, you can try putting it in the second slot, having a GPU in the first slot, get the windows, and trying flashing on lower clocked V biases. And that way, sometimes I can get these cards to work again because they're just degraded. Either the VRAM's degraded or the GPU cores have degraded and they don't work at the same voltage with the same clocks anymore, but they do work at lower clocks at the same voltage. So you can get life, extra life out of your RX 480s or 580s that way. It's just in this case, there's just something that's a hard fault here. So it's an unfortunate thing, but I definitely can't say that I'm surprised. So this next one is actually really special. And I got to thank you so much, Alex, for sending this in because this is actually a lot of hardware in terms of dollar value, even to this date. Even though this board, this is the C2621E Sage from ASUS, even though this was released essentially back in the Skylake generation, this is the Xeon Golds and DDR4. This board right here, what Azus did was something special and they decided to take a server grade platform and essentially make it into a desktop EATX size, but also two sockets and then load up a heap of desktop features like USB-C, BIOS postcodes, onboard M.2. And also you've got four X16 PCIe slots. So they say on the letter here, I'll pull the letter up on the screen for you guys. Uh, he basically, Alex wants me to do a new Darth Jar Jar style build. And he believes this is the right hardware for the job. And actually after taking a look at it, I believe it could very well be the right board for the job. In terms of Darth Jar Jar though, we got the red and black theme. This board is looking like it's got green, 
gunmetal gray and black. So if there's some sort of character that you guys think matches this color scheme, then perhaps we could do something around that and this being the base. Because he sent in essentially two Xeons with this, loaded it up with DDR4 RAM and then put in the two blocks as well. So this is actually quite a lot of hardware here that they've uh, sent in. So thank you so much for that. And I'm gonna definitely, uh, after I finish recording the Can Yes Fix It episodes here, I'm gonna call up one of my friends who does custom PCs and see if they're interested in making something happen here on the channel. So thank you so much for sending that in. So this is the last package for episode one. We're going to continue this on in episode two because that all that there, that massive stack is just from one person. So big thanks to Steve for sending that all in. That's actually just amazing. But this right here was, they didn't leave a message. This is from Central Sora Knife Works. So they're like, look, Brian, fix this or, <laughs> and so, there's no message, but thank you very much. They ended up sending over a B350 motherboard, no CPU, but DDR4 memory. So I'm assuming that a lot of people actually, I see this locally, I've seen this before, and even Can Yes Fix It episodes. People sent in the earlier uh, B350 and even B450 motherboards, and they just need a BIOS update. In this case, we just put a Ryzen uh, 2200G in, and we got it working fine, updated the BIOS, and so you can then put in a Ryzen 5 3600 after that. So that's usually a common problem I see a lot with older motherboards. They just don't have the BIOS support there. But once you get an older CPU and update the BIOS, you're good to go. Then there was uh, some DDR3 memory and also two i7s, a 2600 and a 3770. We just chucked them in this Dell here, quickly tested it all out. The RAM works fine. The CPUs, both of them boot up with no problems whatsoever. But then lastly, there is this AM... Uh, AMD, the this is like going back to Limp Biscuit era, early 2000s. This is like a 3000 plus Athlon. Um, so I don't know if it's the X2 or the single core. I think it's a single core. But I'm pretty sure Marco would love this. So I might give this to Marco. So we're finishing up this first episode. Episode two is gonna be huge as well as three. We've got all those motherboards to get through in the boxes. But what we saw right now is you'll probably see my process is a little bit different than it is last time. I'm going through this stuff in rapid succession. And there is a couple of reasons for that, actually. The first reason is my son is coming to Australia in a couple of days. We're gonna be looking to enroll him, hopefully in a school here, because he wants to stay in Australia. So I'm really ecstatic about that. That's like some awesome news in my personal life. I thought I'd share it with you guys. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's been a long battle. If you guys have followed me for a while, you know, it's been a long battle with all this stuff, but uh, things are starting to work out. And the second reason is, is that with PC parts, I find the only time you should really waste the extra time with them is if you're borderline. If they're working and they're a little bit janky, like you've seen in the past episodes of Can Yes Fix It, I've had 1080s and 1080Is that have been so close to working and I've either got them over the line or I didn't. But this time around, like that RX 580, really not worth the time. It's just, I know from experience that thing is not gonna work. I can definitely pass it off to someone else they can waste a whole day on it and just they've wasted a whole day and they'll get the same result I've got. There is a faulty part on that and you need to replace that faulty part. You need to go to those uh, gurus, I think it's North Ridge Fix and the other guys who just really know their stuff. You gotta go to them, they gotta replace parts. It's that simple. But then there's also the other parts that you just do these simple processes and it's like a protocol. You go through it, if you can get a signal out of it, you're gonna be laughing. And it's usually a lot of times I find you're just cleaning the products like we did with the GPUs, either make sure it's not shorting anything or it's not inducing any sort of capacitance to stop it from working. And after you're done with that, you can then go through the process of making sure the BIOS is up to date and other things like flashing on lower clocks if something's degraded. And so we've seen in this episode, we've had some of the parts that are working fine. Some of them haven't been working fine, but I think the next episode is gonna be really juicy because I've read the message already and there's a problematic B-SOD going on with a motherboard and CPU combination. So I look forward to giving you guys that episode. Stay tuned. But also now I've got to get back to the used parts hunt because I started this episode within the parts hunt because I was waiting for people to get back to me with deals and they did. They got back to me. <laughs> I've got some deals that are going to go pick up. And so the parts hunts should be really good this month too. Anyhow, guys, if you've got any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. Also, thanks so much for sending the stuff in, especially the gifts as well. 
Um, Mr. Thompson, he sent the extra stuff in. There was actually an extra package he sent in with gifts. And he, in the past, bought the Fortnite budget gaming PC that we had. But this time he sent me some precision tools and everything. I was actually like, wow, thank you so much because I actually really need uh, some of that stuff. So some of you guys can read my mind. It's like, some of you guys are Jedi. Jedi tech enthusiasts. Anyhow, I'll catch you in the next episode very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.